welcome back, it's Christine again with the Artist Pod, and today we'll be talking about how to draw a loggerhead turtle. As always, I'm using a Wacom Intos Pro tablet, and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop. So, let's get arting. Alright, here's the loggerhead turtle. Um, so they have kind of like a cream color running through the skin with some brown over top, and then their shell is kind of a reddish brown, so I'm going to get started with the cream color. Probably also just going to go ahead, oh, and it's like, it's like a little bit of yellowish cream on their shell underneath too. Um, I'm probably just going to go ahead and add shadows and highlights as I do it. Um, since, you know, doing shells and things like this can take a while, that'll speed the process up. And for some parts of it, it'll be a little easier anyway. Right, so I'm going to have the light source coming from um, above, maybe a little bit into the right, just enough to illuminate the face. So. Um, so we'll have like this cream color moving through, right, it's going to be next to all of it. And then edges, all edges are in shadow. Um, right, so in between all of the little like scales will be some of this cream color. But in some cases, because of the angle, we wouldn't see it. So I'm just kind of indicating that there. And then we'll, you know, follow this down. It's kind of like a little plate on the face. I might change the color. It is yellowish, but I don't know, it's almost too yellowish. Right, so being careful around the eyes. So I'm going to have the lines coming straight to the eye and then bending down underneath, and then meeting again on the back side by coming off like so. That's what I typically do when animals have fur. I'm gonna have this be a little bit of a shadow. Um, and then we'll have the highlight in between that. Right, and then, you know, underneath, this would all be in shadow, probably kicking in, so we might have a little bit of a highlight here, but it would kick in pretty quickly through here, into shadow. It's better to have too much shadow than too little, because it's easier to add highlight than take highlight away. Um. So, right, so shadow under here would all be shadow, you because you have the little sea turtle arm blocking it. Um, you would have that transition point through here where you'd be hitting some shadow, but it would be transitioning to like highlight. Right, all through here, same kind of thing. Transitioning to highlight somewhere in this vicinity. And then all under here would be shadow. Um, of course, as we just mentioned, right, the shell underneath will be shadow. Uh, and then, you know, you're going to have some shadowing here on the front of the fin where that's turned away from the light source. And just like, you know, on the, on the head, uh, everything in between the little, like, lines, the... Uh, things is going to be this like lighter creamy color now some of them are running all the way down to the bottom but um, it does still transition 
even still. And then, you know, you have under here, this would be shadow. Right as you come around, it would slowly transition into highlight. And then shell underneath, and all edges are kind of in shadow too. So this we have a slightly different angle, but we're still going to have the edge in shadow. So lightly doing these lines in between. Right, I don't know that that's really going to show up as nicely because there's not a lot of space there. Um, and then you're going to have a little bit of shadowing where the shell is blocking. And then the rest of this should be highlight. I mean, minus where I'm finishing out the shadow. So um, I'm going to get all of this light cream color done, and I'll be right back.
Now that we have that um, kind of creamy yellowish color in, um, I'm going to add in the brown. And that's relatively straightforward. It's, you know, all the little humps that we didn't do, basically. Um, same rules apply though, right? All edges are in shadow, so we're going to have a little bit of shadowing. And we're going to stay within the confines of what we've already done. Um, it's a little bit, um, I want to say annoying, but it can be more time consuming to do the individual like uh, scales like this. That's why I don't often do snakes and stuff is they take so long. But what I like about it is the after effect of something like this usually looks incredible because there's so much detail just kind of built into the animal. It's just to get there, it's kind of like, oh, there's too much detail built into the animal. <laughs> um, so right, shadowing along the front of that fin. I keep wanting to call it fin. I don't, I don't think it is. Um, they'll be shadowing right around here as well, right? We can kind of see where we cut it off with the um, the other color. When in doubt, my language skills are so good. Right, so all that's light pen pressure. Um, light pen pressure. So all of this would be light pen pressure. It's on the front where that flipper is rolling over. So we'll do that a little bit here too. Um, you're going to have what I didn't mention, you know, when I was doing this one, right? The shell on that back leg is going to cast a bit of a shadow. All edges are in shadow. I'm not fully following that rule with this because there's so much independent detail, right? But the shell would, would definitely be casting a bit of a shadow. Um, you're going to have, you know, the front of the, the mouth here. This is going to be in some shadow because this is turned away, but it would be going into highlight. As it kind of rounds over. Then you have the bottom, which, you know, you have the double whammy of it's underneath. <laughs> so you would have that shadow, you know, it would cut in the same spot. We're going to make some adjustments. I'm giving myself a little extra wiggle room there. And then as it's rounding down, you know, all of this underneath would be in shadow until it catches up to the higher point. Um, and then again, all edges are in shadow, so these little bumps here, back here. And, you know, you have the nose as well. And those little nostrils, so above the nostrils going into shadow, but also the nose because it's turned away like the... Um, Like the face, <laughs> like the mouth and company is. All right, so then um, everything else will be full pin pressure. So, right, full pin pressure should look radically different. I'm gonna do that even here. See that difference, right? Fully in this box. And then as we take this away, that'll start to look. That'll start to look. Um, different. All right, so I'm going to get all of this done and I'll be right back.
I am gonna uh, go back in. I saw some spots that I missed with the lighter color, so I'm gonna do that real fast. Or rehash areas that I think faded out. It's not many, it's just a few. I'm just making sure that they're all filled in. I noticed it more on this fin than elsewhere. That's a quick, quick fix. Gonna go back to the brown and get those spots I missed down here. And then just a few little spots. All right. Now, I think he's looking pretty good. And then just trying to make sure, you know, it doesn't look like a whole bunch of individual lines, but that it kind of has some cohesiveness. And I can do that just by kind of looping my strokes, which is what I started doing at the end. Didn't do it so much as the, at the beginning. And then just blending. Okay. All right, I think it's a good start for sure. Now, um, the shell is kind of a reddish brown. So, um, well, the shell on top, the shell underneath is, you know, that off tan cream color thing. Um, so, this reddish brown, you know, it, it, all edges are technically in shadow, and then in between all these little joints, they'll be in shadow, but it's all going to be the same color. And some of this will be in how we draw it. Um, right, so I, and I am going to get a little bit of this shadowing as the shell loops down because it's not that the body is running into it, it's that the shell is covering it, so. At least not until it loops around on the other side. Um, and then maybe a little bit there. So all the way around the edge, down here. Right, this whole edge. Mm, and then the keep calling it a fin. The flipper? Why am I so good with anatomy? We'll block some of it before we get back to having it once again. Right, and you can kind of see it better over here why it would be going into shadow, the way that the shell is shaped and looping over. Uh, and in fact, some of this is probably that lighter color because it's coming underneath, but that's fine. It'll be easier to do it this way. Right, so getting these shadows in. And then with all edges going in shadow, we're gonna have that. And then we have, again, all edges going in shadow, so just a little bit of the top. And then we're gonna follow you know, all the joints down with shadow. Not doing much, I probably should do more, but I, f I think the way I shadow it in can help make it look right. Okay, so then the rest, highlight theory, right? So I'll just put full pin pressure there, giving myself the gap. And because I'm not going all the way to the edge, that will also create a shadow in between the shells in between the individual like links in the shell. Which is why I think I don't need to indicate for all of it. And the same is true here, right? We have all these guys, but there'll be gaps where um, they're not connecting in 
where I'm not getting close to connecting. And then it would be relatively easy to add shadow on top of that if we needed to. If I thought it didn't quite look right, you know. All right, so I'm going to do the rest of this in highlight, and I will be right back. The rest of the shell, just to specify. Gonna blend in some of this down here. Right, because it looks a little too uh, jarring. <laughs> so I'm just making sure that's a nice, neat blend. All right, and then I'm gonna add a few shadows in between the shells just to minimize how deep these shadows are. Blend it in a little better, basically. But with light pin pressure to do that, right? So that'll allow it to blend, but still keep the dip that's there. It's just uh, the darker the shadow, the deeper that dip is, right? So if I want to minimize that, because it's just a hump instead of like a full ravine, um, I'm going to add a, a few more lines. But you can still tell very easily where they are. Now I am actually gonna pop back and take just a little bit of this light color and come up under here for a few of these to indicate it's switching over as we come underneath, but not fully. And as it starts turning away, not as much. And maybe even some up here, right? It's going right into um, against his back. And so making sure that this is clearly like a dip down and underneath. In some areas. Not everywhere, but in enough. Okay. Yeah, you get kind of that sensation that it's right where the shell turns into the turtle. Okay. The only thing I don't like that I did, and I can't change it because I left it on the same layer, is this like stripe here. Maybe I could try. I come up and like swipe it out. Because it's just. So clearly, is that it? Is that really where it's bothering me the most? I think it is. Okay. So we're gonna go back to this color real fast and refine those edges where it was bothering me, at least now for the rest of it. Um, right, they would be. And if I need to, right, you can see what I'm doing here is I'm pushing up. Normally I'd say on something like this, you want to be careful because it's a shell, right? You don't want to um, make it uneven, but. So now for um, the eyes. So I can't find like with any definitive specificity that their eyes are brown, but it seems like a lot of turtles' eyes are brown. So we're gonna make their eyes brown. Um, I'm just gonna desaturate the color we had for the 
shell and um, darken it up a bit. All right, so all right, we're gonna have pupil. And then, so, uh, I don't know if that's looking at us yet, but we're gonna try and see. So we're gonna, oh, don't do that. And take uh, the lines and make a semicircle um, around the eye. Right, so we're kind of following the contour from the pupil down of the top lid because what's happening right is um, that's what's casting a shadow that's why we're going into black right and so then just filling out the rest of that around in a circle I also would have like a film or something over their eyes but I don't know if we're gonna do all that okay so after we get that in Usually I, I take the elliptical maquis tool and I make sure it's a perfect circle, but we won't do that. Light source coming from above and to the right, so the opposite side of that we're gonna brighten up. And then on the side of the light source we're gonna brighten up. The edge will go into shadow. This will stay in highlight. All the way underneath the eye going into shadow then at the edge again and then going into shadow on this back side, but we're gonna brighten it up just a little bit and then just blending it all together. All right, so nice and, and easy. And then we really wanna make sure this is nice and highlighted. And then as we come up to the edge where it's going into shadow, obviously that would be in shadow, be going into shadow. All right, and we can brighten this up as much as we want and blend it in. All right. They come back not quite looking at us. Um, I might actually blend a little bit more up. I usually don't do that but it just looks like it could use it. So I'm not gonna do much. I'm gonna see if I can avoid having to fill it all the way around. But going a little higher sometimes can help ground it a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing we add to this part is the light flare. So I am going to take the elliptical mock key tool for that. I'm going to draw like a little circle. Make sure it's in the highlighted section of the eye, so not, you know, up here in the shadow. And then fill it with the foreground color. Right. Now, we can experiment here. Um, and see about adding in some extra highlights. I might do it with like a bluish, bluish, whitish color. Let me see how that does. I've done it before. Can work, but it can also be tricky to pull off. Um, right, the Water is kind of going all over the place, right? So there's, I wanna do this very lightly. I just started pressing hard and that didn't work out. Right, so you wanna kind of zigzag it back and forth, right? It has this quality to it where it, it does kind of 
create little almost box shapes. Right, so in these box shapes on the on the shells, but and I'm not sure it'll work or not. So this is experimentation. It kind of really would only be where there's highlights. Right, so it wouldn't go into the shadow where nothing would be hitting. Right, so it's just kind of creating a, a crisscross pattern. All right, now that we've done that, matches some very light strokes around them to brighten up and highlight what we just did. Let's see if this again works or not. All experimentation. I feel like every time I add water like this to a scene, I then always experiment. I feel like I need to go back and see what I did before. I always forget what I've done, and I always tend to figure out a solution, but then I forget what that solution is because I don't do this enough. I mean, I've done it enough, I have a vague idea, but not enough that I'm solidified in it. So basically the idea is the squiggle I've done is the main line, right? So the highlight is then extending off of that. So I'm making sure my pin pressure is not as bright as that middle stripe that I'm based on. I'm basing my next sort of swipes off of. I do think that works, at least for that fin. Alright, so what I'm doing now is just adding some squiggles to see if this makes it look any more... I like how it looks on some of them, but I think I can do a better job of having it fade out. And I can do that if I add just some like squiggling and we'll see if I like it or not. I can take it away if I don't. <laughs> it's a nice quick way to like, you know, it imitates that movement. And I can fade it off pretty easily and quick. And it's, you know, nice and easy and quick to do. I just have to put enough pin pressure that it actually records my strokes. <laughs> and then I can sort of finalize exactly where I think it would go. So it would be in highlight. But you also don't want it to, like... Cut off the wrong spot. Like, if it looks too sudden, you know, like down here, I didn't do a good job of like having a good cutoff point. So I might have a little bit like extending down. And then I can control that just a little bit. Just light, light pin pressure. That's why sometimes it's not recording my strokes as my pin pressure is so light. I actually do think it adds a lot. Right, so if I take that away, whew, three layers of it. Maybe I could get away with that. Instead of having that, that middle section, then you have a little bit more faded, which is nice. You get that kind of reflection without too strong of a line. I think it adds a nice highlight to it too. Might add a little bit more just where I think it would connect in here. And then sticking to the highlight but connects it all the way into the shoulder. Yeah, I kind of like that. 
Looks like he's close to the surface. There we go. A loggerhead turtle. All right, so that's how you draw a loggerhead turtle. I hope that's helpful. In the floating nether next to me of other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.